Hey everyone, Face here. Uh, well, I'm pretty much uh, finished assembly of uh, my 262. Uh, I've attached the wing, um, and the uh, as I mentioned in the last video, the uh, engines are uh, have already been attached uh, to the wing. Uh, so basic assembly is primarily finished. Um, uh, all the seams have been dealt with. Uh, now all that basically is required is uh, to uh, button this thing up uh, and uh, mask off what uh, I don't want to get painted. Uh, such as you can see the uh, windscreen is already attached and in fact the windows are already masked. Uh, but what I have here are the canopy and the rear uh, uh, portion of the canopy uh, which have yet to be attached or masked. Not to mention, also, there's the gun bay and uh, the, wheel, um, the wheel wells underneath that, uh, well, after all the work that we put into uh, painting them, you know, I don't want to lose that detail when I go to uh, paint the, uh, the top coats. So that is where masking comes in. Now, one thing I like about this, this particular model um, is a little trick that... Uh, I actually picked up from an issue of Fine Scale Modeler when they did their review of this kit probably back in about 2002 or 2003. Um, the, the builder of, their, uh, of the workbench review that was posted in that, uh, that issue uh, did the same thing that I'm going to do now. And see this, this is the closed gun bay door. It fits quite snugly uh, on, over the gun bay and in fact will remain in place with no glue. So there you go, that's, uh, that's a perfect mask right there. Now for the rest of it, we will have to get a little bit more creative. Uh, for the underside, you know, what we could do is we could take some tape and, uh, you know, go all up inside the wheel well and, uh, you know, take a lot of time to futz around with it that way. But what I like to do is I like to use a little bit of tissue. You know, take a couple of squares and then just like fold it up into kind of a, a little wad and then stuff it into the opening in such a way that um, that it basically it fits inside and covers the majority of the detail. A single piece of tissue can actually, if uh, folded in stuffed in in a creative way can actually fill the entire opening and see basically there. You know, I'll have to do a little bit of adjusting, but uh, for the most part that's basically all you really need to do. Because um, all you're trying to do is just protect the inside from overspray. And now we'll just do the same thing for the other side. As you can see now the, uh, the underside of uh, the main uh, landing gear bay is now protected. Now of course there's the nose gear um, but uh, it's not an unusual shape at all. So basically, in this case, I would just take a, a smaller piece of tissue and just kind of roll it up into into kind of a rectangle and uh, and stuff it in. And there we go. Now, alternately, you could use cotton balls or I don't know what else you might want to use, but. Um, I like to use tissue paper because it's, you know, convenient and it's readily available. Um, so now that we've got the, uh, the wheel wells um, taken care of, it's time to move on to the canopy glass. Uh, and for that we're going to have to use some masking tape. I like to use Tamiya brand tape. It's uh, specifically designed for modeling in that uh, it's very low tack, meaning that it won't leave any adhesive residue on the surface of the model. Um, and it's very transparent, um, which you wouldn't think it, but that's actually very helpful in uh, in, uh, in in finding the edges of of uh, what you're trying to mask. With which, in the case of a, a piece of canopy, is essential because you're trying to uh, protect the glass but leave the framing exposed. So now. Basically, in a, for a canopy like this, it won't be very difficult because it's very, it's, it's generally quite flat. So you would just apply a piece of tape onto the part and burnish it down, meaning uh, f smooth it out with your thumb 
so that uh, it's very flat and uh, it's not going to lift on any corners. Um, and one advantage to this, to the tape being very thin, is that it lets you kind of get an, an impression of, uh, of the edges of the framing. And I like to use just a fingernail and uh, to, uh, to find those edges and, uh, and kind of emboss the tape into those edges so that you can find it more easily with a hobby knife. Now, you probably won't be able to quite make that out on the camera, but uh, on the very edges of the frame, uh, there's just kind of an embossed little ridge. Um, and that's where I'll run my, uh, my hobby knife along uh, to trim the tape. So here we have our, uh, our piece of canopy um, that is all masked off, and we've got our hobby knife with a brand new blade. Um, this is the standard number 11 type uh, flat edge blade. Um, the reason you want a brand new one is because you want the sharpest tip possible so that you can slice through the tape with the minimal amount of pressure possible. Now essentially what you're going to do is you're just going to follow the edges of the tape where you uh, you embossed your finger uh, the, you embossed the edge of the frame with your fingernail and you're going to want to do this very very carefully very gently um, one advantage to this particular aircraft is that the framing on the canopy is all very very straight so it's uh, you're not going to have to follow any curved lines or uh, or complicated uh, compound corners or anything so it makes it very easy and essentially there you go that's the uh, piece of tape sorry that's the piece of tape that we just trimmed off and that's the uh, the canopy uh, you can see the framing on the bottom is all uh, is all exposed while the glass is uh, is covered up um, there's not much more to it than that occasionally you're gonna get pieces of glass or areas that you're going to have to mask that are larger than a single piece of tape will be able to cover. In which case, then, yeah, you're going to have to get a little more creative in, uh, in how you mask. But uh, this is the very basics of it. Just, you know, emboss with your fingernail, and then follow that embossed line with your hobby knife. And you're going to want to make sure that you've got really good lighting um, so that you can, you can see it from the best angle possible. And there we go. That is uh, the one side uh, window now completely masked and, uh, and protected. So now all I have to do is the same thing to the other side. Oops. And then again to the, uh, the rear portion of the canopy. And then the entire aircraft is essentially masked and ready for painting. So there you can see the uh, canopy is fully masked and uh, installed in place. You can see the framing... Uh, all around, uh, are all around the edge of the canopy, uh, as well as uh, the, the tissue in the landing gear bays, as well as in the uh, in, uh, engine intakes and exhausts. So now that uh, everything is masked off, uh, we're we're basically ready to start painting this thing. Um, the bulk of uh, of uh, the assembly is is now basically finished. Um, I do have some other little odds and ends yet to uh, yet to slap together, like the landing gear, uh, the landing gear doors, uh, and any armament that I'm going to add to this. But um, there's not really going to be a lot to say about those parts, so I'm not going to bother doing uh, doing videos for them. Um, but I will cover them when we get to uh, to the completion and final assembly of the model, uh, as it is right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be ready to start painting this thing. So join me next time, and we'll uh, talk in, a, in greater length about uh, surface primer. I will talk about why you want to use it, how you use it, um, what advantages there are to using it over not using it, and uh, so on and so forth. So thank you everyone out there for watching, and uh, happy modeling.